Welcome to the Intimate Marriage Podcast, where I teach educated, successful couples how to have incredible, passionate relationships so that you can stop compromising and start feeling fully alive in your relationship. I'm your host, Alexandra Stockwell, aka The Intimacy Doctor. I'm a physician and an intimate marriage expert. My husband and I have been married for 26 years. We have four children and full professional lives, and we've created an amazing relationship. I've also shown hundreds of couples how to do so as well. If you want to deepen your understanding of your own relationship and learn to access new heights of emotional, sensual, and erotic intimacy, you're in the right place. I will show you how. Now let's dive in. You are in for a treat. If you've been following me for a while, you know that I talk about how delicious and how juicy and how rich a marriage can be after the first and the second and the third and the fourth and the fifth decade. I myself have been married for 26 years, so I can't speak out of experience, personal experience beyond 26 years. But today I'm going to introduce you to Jim and Ruth Sharon, who have been married for 51 years, they're 75 and 73. And the conversation we're about to have, if you don't listen to the wisdom or the tone in their voice, you might think they're both 26. So let me just say a little bit of professional context and then we're gonna dive in. Dr. Jim Sharon is a licensed psychologist Ruth Sharon, MS, is a licensed professional counselor. They've both been in private practice since 1976. He's a life coach. She's a certified wellness coach. And they have been working together as well as coaching individuals and couples separately, but in business together for many years. They've published books. I mean, really, I could spend the whole session talking about what they've accomplished, but that would get in the way of getting to the juicy stuff. So let's just hear each of your voices. What are you feeling today as you sit next to one another in your Denver office, Ruth? Well, hi, Alexandra. So good to be on your show. So I'm feeling excited as we go into Valentine's weekend. And this is my sweetheart here. Thank you. And likewise. So beautiful. Well, you were talking just before I pressed record about having met when you were 19, Ruth. Let's let's hear the beginnings of your 51-year love story. <laughs> All right. That's juicy in itself. <laughs> oh. Okay. So um, I had a blind date with a guy named Alan, and I was very bored with him. And he said, well, let's go back to my apartment. My roommate's there with a date, and we could hang out. And I said, okay. So we wa- I walked in the apartment, and there's a little... Uh, James A. Sharon laying on the couch with some girl making out (laughs) and the girl popped up because she was embarrassed and Jim had that nice glow and I looked at him and I just got this spark in my heart it's like oh and so he sat up and then he and I started engaging she was flirting with me we were (laughs) flirting we were definitely flirting I think the culmination of it was uh we were left alone in the room because the guy and the woman disappeared. I don't know where they went. I think they went into the black hole. Really. Yeah, we don't know. <laughs> they they, they got out. out of the out of destiny's <laughs> way. I know. So I was sitting in the living room, like just kind of nervous, like, oh, I'm alone with him. I'm going to go in the bed in the kitchen and get a drink of water. Can I tell this part? You can tell this part. All right. So I went to get a drink of water. You have to qualify it, though. This was out of character for me. (laughs) Okay. So I went in and I got a drink of water and he took my shoulder and twirled me around and pressed me against the refrigerator (laughs) and kissed me. (laughs) I was un- unusually <laughs> bold that night. <laughs> that is phenomenal. I know. <laughs> Some would use other words for it, but yeah, it was fun, and I was just so excited. And uh, he checked all the boxes. You know, I'd been practicing, rehearsing who I wanted to marry, and boy, was he ever the tall, dark, handsome guy! <laughs> <laughs> so I asked my roommate permission to go out with her. Did you? He said you can have her. Basically, he didn't have a, a good time either. 
Um, so uh, that. Yeah. So we had a long distance relationship after you graduated and I was still in school and you were getting your master's. So for two and a half years, I think two years, we were long distance. And, right. and we got married in 1970. Got married in 1970. Okay. Well, here it is 2022. And uh, when was the last time you twirled her and pushed her up against a wall, Jim? <laughs> well, I don't know that I've ever done that again, frankly. But we do have a lot of fun. I'm I'm one that likes to keep it light. Sometimes well, we were dancing the other night. And oh yeah, we do things like that, but yeah. not pushing you up against the wall. Okay, well we'll have to try that maybe tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I just I feel like I just want to ask you questions to keep the keep the top keep spinning. <laughs> I, I want everyone to realize this is 51 years into marriage. They met in 1970. No, we met 1967 to be 1967, clear. right? Married, married in 1970. Thank you. Just the fact that you're correcting me on that, I find charming. So that's so beautiful. Our anniversary but, is June 7th. Yes. June 7th. Okay. Amazing. So your relationship is one year older than me. My birthday is June 1968. But what I want to say is, yes, for all practical purposes, pushing her up against the wall and kissing versus twirling her and dancing, those are equivalent in terms of the flow of erotic energy and delight and attention and co-creating juiciness. And I think I'm going to segue right into something that is so tremendous. So I was speaking in my Facebook group, the Intimate Marriage Facebook group, and Ruth, you shared that 50 years into your marriage, your orgasms are more pleasurable, more delightful, more rich. And we're not going to ask exactly how that happens, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> what either one of you is doing to make that happen necessarily. But I almost want to say, will you talk about the mindset or the bodily posture, not in terms of sexual position, but in terms of like, how is it that you sustain the openness to one another? How is it that you let erotic energy reside in your body while stressed putting on new programs and a full counseling schedule and getting dinner cooked. And I know you have a wonderful family, children and grandchildren. You both have tremendous professional responsibilities and achievements. And yet you have time for dancing in the kitchen and for really experiencing the lusciousness that is available when two human beings and their bodies know one another well. So I know that's not a very specific question, but I want to just invite you to share whatever arises. Has it always been this way? Uh, not always. I think usually it's been this way. We've gone through periods where it's not, and we've gone through periods of conflict, for example, as, as everyone else has. The way I would answer that question is to say that we're both high energy people, and we both have a lot of balance in our lives. Uh, we see intimacy as something that is uh, multifaceted. It's not just sexual intimacy. I don't like when people use the word intimate to just refer to sex. Yes, of course. And we meet each other on, uh, it's not an of course to so many people, surprisingly, but um, we meet each other on so many levels. And uh, whether it's fun or, or the lightheartedness that I spoke about earlier, uh, intellectually, you know, and working together, which we have done for about 47 years almost mm -hmm. of our marriage. And so because of that energy and that commitment to balance, it's easy to then um, connect with each other physically as well. And we're direct about that. We have a lot of good code words. Yeah, <laughs> I don't even need code words sometimes, <laughs> although we have those too. Well, I just want to say that um, one of our companies is called Energy for Life, Open the Pathways to Wellness and Love. So that's what it is for me. It's not my personal energy. I'm just opening the pathways. So I have many practices, you know, through meditation and breathing and eating well and dancing, moving, exercise, yoga, 
you know, just keeping the pathways open so the life force keeps moving through. So the life force has lots of aspects, you know, creative energy, joyful energy, spiritual, spiritual energy, also working through hard stuff, you know, putting the, um, the work in to cut up that uh, density and uh, calcification of old patterns and all that. So the energy is used in many ways. And you know, we love sexual pleasure and enjoying each other and sustaining that kind of contact so that more and more is possible. It's like, ooh, that, I didn't know about that. Like, I keep learning stuff. So. I think there really is something <laughs> to be said for spiritual juice as well. Yeah. We've uh, been on parallel spiritual paths for decades, and that does literally and figuratively light us up and creates a, a strong source of energy, uh, something to plug into. Will you be more specific jim like what what exactly does that mean like let's say does that mean you pray or you have spiritual conversations like will you say it in a way that someone can apply it practically even though we're talking about spiritual energy well we've we've been trained in uh, various forms of mysticism and we do uh, mystical practices with each other um those are a little bit hard to, harder to describe in a concrete way. Well, they're meditations with visualizations, really. That's all. a lot of it. And we yeah. do pray and we do have spiritual conversations. Yeah, but anybody can breathe, you know. If, yeah. If we take a few minutes to just breathe and open up what's blocked, you know, shake it out, move it out, exercise it out, punch it out. You know, <laughs> it's just learning how to clear ourselves, taking time to regularly check in and see what's going on. And it's like, Oh, I got that knot in my gut. What's going on down there? So then I go visit my gut to see what's going on down there. So I just keep unblocking the energy, basically. So it's not mystical so much as very practical and just finding what's blocked and unblocking it yeah, well, so I have more energy. Correct. I, I, I did say that I like the practical. I think that's really important. Mm -hmm. And yet we do use a lot of practices, such as with light, for example, mm -hmm. which do create high energy. So... It sounds like you each relate to your own being and body as a vessel that you keep clear and let the energy move through. Yes. Are you updating one another or you just feel the energy flowing with one another? Oh, updating all the time. You mean checking in with each other? Yeah. I mean, like if you find a block in your gut, as you said, is it important that you tell Jim about that block and how you cleared it? Or is it just important that the energy is flowing again? Well, I don't think I'd report how I'm unblocking it. Maybe I might, but I might say I need some quiet or I just need some space, you know, just to kind of go inside, you know, so I ask respectfully for that kind of process time. I don't know if I, I think you're often quite something. transparent. Yeah. Uh, what's going on with you? Right. She's, um, more somatic than I am. I mean, I'm very in touch with my body too, but I don't, uh, I think she's a little bit more um, inclined that way. Yeah. So being a dancer, I've been a dancer, yoga teacher, you know, meditator. I, I was a belly dancer back in the day. Jim was my drummer. So, you know, I like my sensual movement right. and that energy going through my body and la, 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 you know, just shaking it up. <laughs> I used a good word, sensual. I'm, I'm very big on sensuality for both physically oriented. So to me, a big part of sex is sensuality. Yes. And yet there are many people who have a lifelong practice of yoga or even breath work who don't end up having as much pleasure as it seems like the two of you have. <laughs> it's permission, you know, giving ourselves permission. That's the balance Jim was talking about. You know, we work and we we connect and we do our household things and our daily practices, you know, and then we play. We have a Chinese checker tournament going on right now. You know, we just have to have a balance and make time for each other, make time to play. Or just tonight we were going to have massage night on a table that we our friend loaned us. And, you know, so just taking that time is really important. She's unabashed about sexuality, which is, is a turn on for me. She doesn't uh, uh, hold back and she's not bashful. And, uh, you know, you're w willing to say, hey, I like sex. Right? Yeah, a little to the left, honey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it sounds like you've always been that way, Ruth. Oh, no. I had so many times of blocked energy. No, no, it just 
this is an open period that feels really good. Yeah. Okay. Amazing. Will you, in your own words, because I know I paraphrased what you said in my Facebook group, but will you, in your own words, talk about having more openness and access to pleasure now? Mm, Sure. Well, I think one of the turning points was I was at a networking meeting and there was a woman there that sold sex toys and I was very naive about all that stuff. So she came over with her sex toys and she gave me an education about my body that I didn't have before. So that helps so much to understand how this pleasure works, where the orgasms can take place. And, you know, just educating was really important to me. So now I just have a creative palette. There's so many places for orgasm, so many ways, you know, so it's um, kind of a creative, follow this thread, follow the stream, see where it takes me, just letting go into it. Just Yeah, different than our young naivety, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so I, she's taught me more about her body and how to pleasure her. So and you and, too, right? That's true too. Yeah, and you ordered those educational sex videos for adults, and they had been really helpful. It's like oh, I didn't racing, know huh? that. Yeah. yeah. So I think just learning, like any other thing, we just can keep learning and keep opening and keep experimenting, keep exploring. I mean, it's really worth it because the pleasure and the the health benefit of orgasms is just unnameable. There's so many benefits of, you know, having sexual pleasure and orgasms that I liked. It helps me stay young. And it helps us to stay connected in other ways as well. Yes. Every episode, I say that really, I believe that relationship is the vehicle for personal growth. So I would love to hear, Jim, what did you learn about, what have you learned about yourself as a result of being married to Ruth? Oh, that would talk about volumes, right? She, uh, early on, I learned to be more relational. Um, I had a limited number of friends. I was in a fraternity, but in terms of close friendships, uh, and I had a certain awkwardness about me, you know, all the way until probably 21 years old. And uh, being with her, even in those early days, I was able to start breaking through some of my shyness and social awkwardness, social anxiety. And um, then she was always, uh, we use the word energetic. She was so energized, even as a high school and college woman, she was, uh, for example, the president of her national sorority. So, and very interested in community building. So we got into that relatively early in our marriage. We had a holistic health center together. So that taught me a lot about leadership. Um, We had various, you know, big ventures, including our current one. And I keep growing as a leader. And um, I I just, yeah, yeah, I'm just thinking so many things were going through my mind. I witness your changes too, you know, I see how much more you listen, how you really tune in, how you're coachable. Like if I say, hmm, I don't like the way that you shared that or whatever, you just are so coachable. You can make those adjustments. I really appreciate that. And I, and I frankly, I honor that in myself as well. Amazing. Really beautiful. So Ruth, what have you learned about yourself as a result of being a ma- married to this amazing man? Oh, Well, I've learned that my mind can create all kinds of judgments and chat on about his faults. I used to have a a characteristic thing where I'd check under the toaster to see if there were crumbs so I could catch him not doing a complete job in the kitchen. So, you know, I will come a long way in really accepting him as he is and, you know, making the adjustments. Catching me being good. Catch you being good. Yeah, but just relating to who you really are, not my projection of my thoughts of mm-hmm. how you should be. Yeah. And, I mean, I really wore myself out with that. I remember one of my friends said to me, if you're going to wait to be happy till he behaves the way you want, you're going to be waiting a long time. <laughs> I thought that was such great advice. Well, there was a little bit of a dance going on there, of one upmanship on her part, and one downmanship on my part. Yeah. yeah broke through that. I don't know how fast we broke through that, but uh, it took a lot of decades. <laughs> I don't know that it did, frankly. Well, anyway, <laughs> I've learned that, uh, you know, if he, what he's talking about, if I posture is better than him, 
that's really insulting to me and him. So I'm really giving that one up, but you know, sometimes I'll fall prey to it, but you know, just learning how to manage myself, monitor my own you thoughts and about feelings. Humility too. Yeah. Humility. Yeah. Great gratitude. I think that's the biggest thing I've wanted to be so grateful. Like my God, look at my life. Look at this guy. You know, how did we do this? That we grew together like this. So many people grow apart or go numb, you know, but we've stayed alive and still connected and started this heartwise relationship Academy. I mean, at our age, as we started this whole enterprise of online learning for couples, because we just hear the suffering of people so much. So, you know, taking all these organizational and community building skills and putting it to this now, I've learned a lot. <laughs> you know what else I think we haven't mentioned that's really key is that we affirm each other a lot and it's genuine. You know, it's, um, I, I want to say that uh, I use the word pride. I, I like to be able to be honest about what, what we're proud about, right? I don't like fake humility. Yes. So I'm proud of my own sincerity. I think that's one of my strongest suits. Mm -hmm. And so I, I do not uh, say things I don't mean. But so she knows that. And <laughs> very often, it, even in space, it's, it's, there's a rare day that goes by that we're not giving each other a compliment. We're saying how much we really do love each other, how much how grateful we are for our relationship. So we'll say it in various ways. Well, you also thank me for going to the grocery store and yeah. getting special food for Valentine's, yeah. you know, so we thank each other a lot. That's On a regular fun. basis. Mm -hmm. What are you looking forward to in your sixth decade of marriage? <laughs> <laughs> Vacations. <laughs> Re Semi-retirement. <laughs> yeah, a lot more rest, a lot slower pace, just a lot more time to lay on the beach. Okay. Play with grandchildren, go out with friends. Yeah. Wake great. up late and read some books. And, <laughs> and do it together, it sounds like. Together. Yeah, we still love to travel. So, you know, just exploring places we haven't gone. And some of our kids want to travel with us. So that would be fun, you know, just we have a lot to look forward to. We do to. a lot independently. And that's, that's one of the secrets of our relationship is the balance of uh, autonomy and as well as coming together. Hmm. Often travel separately. I'm going to be taking my second trip with just my son this winter, and she's going to be going out with some girlfriends for several days. Yeah, so autonomy is important, that each of us is a separate human being and that we can honor and respect who the other person is instead of trying to make them into who we want them to be. We spent a lot of years in that, and that was exhausting, like they said. <laughs> I don't to think finish. I did that to you as much as you did. Oh, me. yeah, you did. did I really? oh, <laughs> We're gonna, we'll slide this well, one. you're still doing it. If I forget to put the little circle in oh, my accounting oh, okay. book, I have to be All right. <laughs> it shows up differently for each person. Okay, well, this is a really beautiful context. I'd love to invite you to talk about the HeartWise Academy. I have known a number of, I've experienced a number of the teachers you have and it really is a heart-filled endeavor. Would you like to share a little bit about that? Sure. And I want to thank you for your chapter in our HeartWise book. The book is really so beautiful and your chapter was Excellent so important. Chapter. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so Jim compiled the uh, 16 chapters um, in the HeartWise Deepening and Evolving Love Relationships book. And, it, and he was working on it so diligently and I'm looking over his shoulder going, you know, that would be fun if some of those people would like to teach courses to make their con the content of their teachings come alive. So that's what planted the seeds for me. So then we started offering some courses, just starting out with a few, or just building them little by little and um, inviting people to take the courses. So they're pre-recorded. We've, um, you know, had them pre-recorded and they're in little bite-sized pieces. So that's using accelerated learning principles where you can learn a new concept and a by listening and then practicing it. So there's little work, there's workbooks or activities to write in your journal or things to talk to your couple, your partner about. It's also good for independent people who aren't necessarily in a love relationship, but they just want to enhance their relationship skills. So we're providing a lot of different courses. So right now we have your course. You want to say about your course? I'm doing couple spiritual development. And right. the basis of that is really to be very practical about spirituality, yeah. to really ground it. We're developing a lot of new courses this year. 
We also had some webinars that were brief for last year. I think for both of us, again, this is another enterprise that involves community building. And we're, we're wanting to not just be the experts, but really bringing a lot of other uh, expertise, a lot of other voices, and, and create a space in, a, in something we call uh, it's a monthly heart-wise circle where people can deal with what we do call wisdom, not Wisdom Wednesday, but wisdom, uh, wisdom pool. pool. We also have some offering called Wisdom Wednesdays, but this is the wisdom pool where people can interact with each other and on different relationship topics. Well, I'll definitely have the link to the HeartWise Academy in the show notes. And clearly anyone who wants to expand in any area from spirituality to pleasure and back again, it is worth having a look at that website. Thank you very much. Yeah. And I really want to thank you so much for this conversation. It it touches my heart so much. I have to say that uh, neither of my parents lived to the ages that the two of you are. And so I listen with a real um, appreciation for the way that you articulate the experience of a 51 year marriage and being 75 and 73 and the enthusiasm you have for life, not just that you have it, but that you articulate it so generously. So I personally thank you. And I also thank you as the host of the intimate marriage podcast. It was a joy. And I really appreciate your warmth. And uh, I, th- I thought you held the space really well here. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining me on this episode of the Intimate Marriage Podcast. If you're ready to deepen your relationship and create a truly intimate, delicious, and vibrant marriage, head over to alexandrastockwell.com and choose the program that's right for you. 